who mathematically can't win the nomination any other way. What's the Sanders campaign seeing when they look at the electoral map that's driven them to a strategy that makes it seem like all this primary and caucus stuff is pretty hopeless? There's only one man I trust to guide me through an electoral map this year. That is the great Steve Kornacki, political correspondent and the host of Meet the Press Daily on Monday, Sarah on MSNBC. Steve, thank you for doing this. Yeah, sure. Okay, the Bernie Sanders um, campaign to winning the nomination before the convention? So here, when they're saying there's no mathematical way, what you have to understand is what they're referring to in particular here. So we've divided the delegates into two categories. The super delegates, people know about these, the elected officials, the party leaders, they automatically vote at the convention. However, they are not technically committed right now, even if they say they're for Clinton or say they're for Sanders. So the key to what the Sanders campaign is saying now is in this category right here, the allocated delegates. These are the ones given out in primaries and in caucuses. So what they're saying is that nobody when you go through all the primaries and caucuses in this column will hit this number, 2383, the magic number. And there may be something to be said for that. They're basically saying uh, if, if nobody gets to that, then you're going to have, and they're, what they're calling it a contested convention, the contested convention would mean a fight for the superdelegates. They're basically saying the fight for the superdelegates will start when the primary is over. And that part of their argument, you think that is feasible, that neither one of them, under reasonable assumptions about what's going to happen in the primary, that neither one of them is going to get 23 So, So that part, that part is reasonable. In the allocated category, it's very possible Hillary Clinton is, is short of that. However, what the Sanders campaign needs to do at that case is, what they're up against is this. The superdelegate lead that Hillary Clinton and has right now it doesn't mean everything but it doesn't mean nothing these are elected officials who all things being equal clearly would like hillary clinton to be the nominee so sanders needs to force their hand he needs to make them see something that's going to force them to go with him even if they want to go with her and what's generally agreed on the starting the, the first thing he has to do to make that happen is he has to win the pledge delegates he has to win the allocated mm -hmm. delegates so he can say to the super delegates the will of the people is being expressed here in the primaries and caucuses i've won more of these than Hillary Clinton, therefore you have to go with me. And that's the problem right now. If you look at this category, if you look at this right now, I'll erase it so you can see it clearly. We have him down 246. This is after Wisconsin. Now the good news for Sanders is the state of Washington, he won big there, it's not all allocated. When it's all allocated, that 246 is probably gonna drop to 210. So he's down 210 in the allocated category. Now keep that number in mind, because we'll take a look here. This is what's left on the Democratic side. For Sanders to be able to make that argument, these are all the states left the number there's the number of delegates allocated delegates that are up for grabs he needs to erase 210 now that may not seem like a lot but it really is because the way they give out these delegates is proportional. None of these states are winner take all. Nobody can win 475 delegates. Right. right now. Couple yeah. pieces of bad news. First of all, he's done so much better in caucuses than in primaries. Only two states left have caucuses. They're small states, Wyoming, North Dakota. The rest of these are primaries. That's helped her generally. Also, a lot of these primaries, closed primaries. That's a further hurdle for him. You can't have independents, Republicans voting. When that's been the case, Sanders has done better. But look, the way to look at it is this. 210 10 is the number. He needs to erase 210. There's a couple states here. California, then in the Mid-Atlantic, New York, which is next, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Maryland. You add these states together, this is two-thirds of what's left on the Democratic side, just in the Mid-Atlantic and out here. So if you follow me for a second here, if you take every other state, forget, forget those big ones, you take every other state, and you just give Sanders huge wins in these states. He doesn't lose any of them. Worst wins case, them all by double digits. Worst, yeah, worst, case, worst case, he gets a draw in the District of Columbia, because it's hard to see him doing any better than that. But right. otherwise, we're talking big wins. He's going to race 125 of that 210. He would still need to make up 85 at that point. Again, being really optimistic. Here's the problem. Take New York, for instance. That's the next one up. He's trailing in the polls right now. He's made up some ground. He's still down double digits. Demographically, not the best fit for him. Let's say he has a great two weeks. He wins New York. It's 52 48 Sanders, 53 47. He gets it, wins it by a couple points. Huge upset if he does that, by the way. 247 delegates. How would those break down? It'd probably be something like 130 for Sanders and 117 for Hillary Clinton in the absolute best case scenario. So, huge state, huge upset, huge win for Sanders. 
All he does is take 13 off of that. You go down, you look at some of these other states, it'd be the same for Pennsylvania. He's trailing huge in the polls right now. Mm -hmm. He gets a monumental comeback. He wins a closed primary in a big, diverse state. What does he get for that? He might make up 11 delegates on a great night for him. You look at Maryland, demographically, very large African-American population there. Closed primary. This looks like a disaster in the making, potentially, for Bernie Sanders. That's the other risk here. If he loses any of these states, let's say he loses Maryland. Let's say he keeps it close but loses it. It's a 55-40 split in the delegates. He's losing 15 delegates. So you got to, that 125, that target goes up to 140 just yeah. by losing Maryland. So basically, look, the Sanders, it, it, mathematically it can happen. You have to believe in momentum, though, for it to happen. This idea that the demographic hurdles he faces, uh, they're going to disappear in the face of this abstract thing called momentum. That's what you have to believe. And this is all toward him still not having the number of delegates you need in order to clinch the nomination, but simply having a lead so he can make a case to the superdelegates that they ought to support him as the pledged delegate leader, even though he hasn't clinched. Yeah, if he erases 210, yeah. he can start the conversation. He can start the conversation, even though all of the superdelegates right now are very heavily right. toward Clinton. Wow, that's a steep path. Uh, Steve Kornacki, thank you for helping me understand this. I, couldn't, I literally couldn't understand it without you. <laughs> it's fun stuff. My friend. Sure. Uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us.